Hey everybody, my name is Mr. Dumpkins, and today we're going to be taking a look at my hardcore base. So let's get started. So here we have my initial storage room. Just have some furnaces, crafting table, ender chest. Uh, don't have anything in here, well, except a few like unstackable items, um, some enchanted books and such. Uh, most of everything is moved to my item sorter, which is further in the base. This is just, you know, a nice little storage room for when you're starting off your world and everything like that. Over here, we have my mine shaft, and it, as you can see, we're gonna take the take the mine cart down. Uh, these lights here are hooked up to the minecart dispenser, so the lights will turn off when there's no minecarts in there. This build uh, was really fun to make. Uh, I'm always a huge fan of like this little transition here. This uh, 4x4 door was built by Quipla. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description to all of the redstone builds that I've, uh, that I've used. Um, I designed the input system here, so both of these have to be activated before the door will open. And it will close automatically through some skull sensors as well. Down here you can see I've got I've done some branch mining. Um, don't think that you need to branch mine anymore because the uh, caves are so big and you know diamonds are pretty abundant but it's still kind of a little zen feeling to do since uh, I've been branch mining before the caves and cliffs update come out. I started playing in about 1.14 so I believe this button doesn't do anything. Uh, I didn't design the dual input system on the other side. I, I made these two because I was originally going to have ender chests and torches here just to make sure that I always had those when going out, but um, you should pretty much always just have your ender chest on you at all time with some lights, so yeah, didn't really think about that one. And then as you can see it closes again. And then this button here, we go into the little maintenance room where you can kind of see, I put a little credit for every redstone build that I use. and. This is Quipless door. It's a uh, too wide, and I'm not sure if it's tileable or anything like that. But um, yeah, very small, very compact, um, super awesome build. All this redstone around it is just like my uh, shulker inputs and everything, or uh, skulk inputs and everything like that on both sides there. Um, I put two skulk sensors um, next to each other. Just you don't need to, but you know, just thought that you know the other one would want a friend for, you know, having to be stuck in water for eternity. And then, yeah, down here you can see is a little bit more of the input. I've got some buttons that'll like, so you can see that uh, the lights are turned on when both of these buttons are pressed. And you can see that the piston door will trigger and do with all its things. And then you can also close the door here. It moves very fast. This is my own little piston door. Um, kind of shows you the level of redstone prowess of me versus Quipla here. Yeah, you can turn off the skulk sensors. So if this is off, then this repeater's locked and you won't be able to, you know, just in case there's some maintenance or something like that. This door, what, I broke this door many times trying to like get the input system to work, but uh, it was always a very easy fix, which was just another nice and uh, awesome thing about this this build. And then over here you can see we have uh, the minecart lights, you know, which is just a bunch of redstone hooked up to these lights here. Uh, these sandstone blocks just mean that they're uh, for the door, maintenance door here. So this just keeps it always on in case I have to like walk in and out. And then this button will just uh, We'll just activate the door for a little bit. The back maintenance rooms here are all connected. Uh, so there's like a little smaller area outside of the base. So we can also take this automatic uh, my cart back up. I find this stuff to be really fun about Minecraft. You can like have your own little, you can have your base area, and then you can have like the back room. Kind of my favorite part too 
is that uh, I like to, you know, spend some time like concealing the redstone and everything like that in, uh, you know, just to make sure that that outside base or that it looks really nice. But then in here, you know, you can just put the pulse extensor just like right around. It doesn't have to look fancy or anything like that. If we come up here, this is my little ore treasure room. Uh, these are all mending books that I got from villagers. Kind of decided that it would be more fun to just find mending books while exploring. Uh, but I did use one to uh, put mending on my axe. But every other mending has either been found through, like, um, you know, finding these kind of pickaxes out in the end cities, or uh, and finding mending books just exploring, mostly in ancient cities, because that's where you have the highest chance of finding enchanted books. Some curse of vanishing, some dried kelp blocks. I think this is my first anvil. These are the cobblestone stairs used before uh, I implemented the minecart system there. As you can see here, I did find quite a bit of deep slate emeralds. Uh, didn't find the last one though. And uh, the way I look for these is I just fly around big mountains and kind of like try and like skirt around the areas, the cave areas that are um, straddling the line between the stone and the deep slate, which you have, a, so you have a pretty good chance of like spotting one of these. Branch mining for these is not really that, uh, not something I like because you have to use silk touch, and if you use silk touch, you get deep slate instead of deep sl uh, cobble deep slate, and you can't use deep slate to craft it into any of the uh, nice deep slate blocks. Come down here, then we can exit here, and we're back out in the normal part of the base. We come over here see there's the four beacon beams here in the kelp and this is my kelp smelter so on this side it's just kind of like a manual place where I can like oh there was something in there um, oh I, I believe they're, they're potatoes yeah because I, I essentially live on baked potatoes and so yeah that'll just it's kind of like a little manual smelting job. You can only smelt, you know, a uh, minecart with chest. I've been thinking about building a uh, larger uh, smelter machine for like shulker boxes of sand and such like that whenever I need like a big build. But for now, this has been like perfect. Dried kelp blocks are what I use for storage. This is where all this stuff comes in. And then this is the automatic part. So this will just dry kelp here and then put it here. I have to manually craft it. Um, uh, you know, now that the auto crafter is out, I would have, I would change this whole system to, you know, auto craft all of that stuff. But um, I built this before knowing the auto crafter was going to come out. If you hit this switch, it will lock all of these hoppers. Oh, well, um, so you can just take the item out instead, or lock these hoppers so you can just take the items out and get them experience. So this little end rod here is just to show that I need to grab experience from these two before going to, uh, going down and starting over. Uh, it's a pretty slow experience farm, like you know, not as good as like a mob farm or anything like that. But you know, for a single player world, it works perfectly well for like uh, repairing boots and you know, uh, enchanting things. And I also have my enchanter set up in here. I do think that you can build a you know a room for enchanting as well because that's fun, but. You know, having uh, having the enchanter close to where I get all my experience is pretty important. So, and then if you hit this button, it will call the minecart uh, hopper and uh, distribute the kelp, just so that I can like you know grab some experience if I need to without having to wait for the the minecart hopper to fill up completely. So as you can see here, we can call it. And then it will automatically re this will just automatically refill as it needs to. So you can see that these hoppers here are completely full. And then yeah, so I could grab the uh, I could grab the tribe kelp here because I have this on. And then while this is on, these little uh, hoppers stretch up. I can jump over because I have jump boost now, but before I didn't. So this is kind of like a little visual indicator to remind me to turn this off before I leave. Because if if not, then this will uh, 
start running infinitely after a few cycles. If we come over here, this is the on and off switch for the whole base. No, not the whole base, but for the build. So it'll turn these two lights off here, as you can see. This um, this design is by Cubfan. I'm gonna put a link in the description again. I really love the uh, like glass viewing area that he had in his build. I believe it was in his Hermitcraft uh, pyramid video. Uh, but yeah, pretty easy to build. Um, I rerouted like you know where the kelp and such goes, but. Um, minecart loader itself and you know this, this design was all by him and I just think it looks so cool and then if you hit this button here that'll just just do a manual trigger and then this chest will fill up with kelp first before uh, moving on to smelting the kelp and such like that oh we got a thunderstorm outside And yeah, so once this finishes filling up with dried kelp completely, it will then uh, switch over and run all the kelp into here, which will make it convert, uh, which goes through a composter and will come up with some bone meal. And then when there's anything in this chest, this light turns off so that I know, uh, so that I know to grab something. And then when this full chest fills up, the whole base, or the, the whole build will uh, shut off so that, you know, for just save on lag and such. Yeah, and then we can go into the maintenance area, just kind of see the redstone here. Big confusing mess, so I'm just going to like walk through it, uh, not really describe what's going on. You know, you can so you see like the backlight, here's like the composter and everything like that. So I, I turn the water on when it's time to uh, when it's time to smelt or uh, compost the kelp because uh, running water makes a lot of sound, which can be an annoying. Up here, you can see we can swim around in the tanks themselves. Just to go swimming, and on the back side, we just have you know, kind of shows where the, the redstone. Here we have the on and another on and off switch for the whole build. And then if we go up here, we have the backlight to the big we have the redstone for the big light. Oh, Enderman always leaving Enderman always leave little presents like that everywhere, so if you play in a world without mob griefing, then yeah, you know that. Just tons of little redstone lights and stuff like that to just move around. And these are all the uh repeaters are on so that when they're off the uh, this will turn off all of the or lock all those hoppers above and then this is just uh, on the other side here the same thing Up over here we have uh, probably the most inefficient uh, skulk elevator I've ever done it, you can essentially swim up this thing before it even trigger, before it even like you know triggers the bubble elevator. But I was originally going to have uh, instead of having like individual openings to get into the maintenance area, I was going to like have a uh, just you you'd have to come in through the outside over here. But I eventually decided against that because you know it's just better to be able to go into the redstone build without having to uh, just in the build itself. I would just break blocks. I notice all the time so. But in my previous hardcore world before I died, I had it like this, but uh, I only had a couple of builds before dying, so. Yeah, so instead this is just a little uh, redstone shrine area. You can see like, uh, just showing you like what a button, a uh, T flip flop is. And like, you know, that it's kind of like the equivalent to a switch. You know, uh, just a regular button press versus a pulse extender and such. And then these blocks just kind of like show like what, uh, so if there's if it's a diamond block, that means it's the main switch for the build. This means that you know it'll have some outside the outside impact, like uh, triggering the mine carts or something like that. And then if it's sandstone, it just means it's a door to get in and out. And then this is kind of just showing like a maintenance switch. So um, 
whenever these lights should always be on to show that the thing is in operation. And then if you turn this off, that means that uh, you're kind of like in a maintenance mode or whatever. So like if you have to work on the build by shutting things off. I do upgrade my things quite a bit. Like, you know, this kelp smelter was not uh, as unwieldy as this before, uh, you know, at the start. But then eventually, you know, you kind of want to add things like the minecart uh, refilling the all of the hoppers automatically and such like that. And then if we come down here, there's a little bit of a beacon beam. And then you see that you can, like, walk into the, uh, into the mine shaft here. I kind of love that, you know, uh, it's just stone bricks and lanterns here, except for, you know, when it brushes up against, like, other builds, and it kind of has a really weird kind of color palette here, but I just kind of like, like, back here working with shapes instead of, uh, you know, having to worry about, like, the true, like, color aesthetics and stuff like that. Because after, like, finishing a build, like, outside or something like that, um, yeah, it can just feel nice to be able to just, like, put some stone bricks around everything. And if we come out here, yeah, so this, uh, this is kind of like the heart of the base, in the sense I've spent a lot of time here, you know, just getting dried kelp and everything like that, and, you know, experience, and let's see, I've got a bunch of stuff that I've been meaning to, like, craft and things like that. Uh, I think this is just, like, fireworks for, I finally wanted to make a crossbow. Now if we come over here, this is the potion brewing system. So this was designed by Shulkercraft. Once again, link in the description for them. Uh, I did add a couple of, uh, I rearranged the the items just a little bit and I added a poison, I believe. They didn't have uh, the ability, to, they didn't have that in there at first, but then we have a book here to just kind of show that, um, how to get the potions that aren't just like an awkward potion or uh, nether wart plus uh, anything else. So as you can see, there's no bottles in there, but if we hit flip the switch, the bottles will come in, and then we can like, we can craft our, uh, we can brew our thing. You can only do it once at a time, and then you hit this switch again once it's done, and the bottles will flow into here. But since there's just water bottles, so let's go back in here. This build was really fun because, you know, you have to kind of go out and exploring. There's somewhere in my world where there's, uh, just hundreds of turtles on a beach because getting all those scutes and it's not all filled up but you know just whenever I whenever I uh, you know just have the material I'll just like bring it over here uh, I do you know like dragon's breath and all that such so these lights here um, are all triggered so you know whenever there's nothing in there the light will turn off so you know to put some more stuff in there and then if there's no nether wart, this will turn off, and then these lights will turn off as well, so you know to harvest the nether wart. And this is my nether wart farm. Uh, for a single player world, this is essentially all you need. Just I, I don't even harvest this very much anymore because I just I have so much nether wart. And I don't have a button to get in there, but you can swim into this maintenance room here. Yeah, as you can see, pretty pretty simple build, but, um, you know, the simplicity is what makes it so awesome. So, once again, thanks for Shulkercraft for this. And if we come over here, you can see we're back at the kelp smelter with the big light and everything like that. So, things are connected. And then if we go down here, we get to other redstone builds, and then that takes you even further down. Oh, another little end point. Alright, so let's get back out here. Um, it's mostly designed so that you can like walk through everything, but there's probably a couple of places that you, you do have to like jump to get out. But it should always be just at least a one one black jump, so you don't need jump. And if we come over here, we are in my little farming area. So I was originally going to like have this come outside, but then I kind of decided that it's more more fun to like keep the base kind of like inside, sort of. So just put a little skylight here, and then got like three 5x5 five five patches of farmland. 
and then just another little one here. Uh, mostly just grow potatoes because that's where I, you know, that's what I eat. But also I have you know, wheat, carrots, and such like that. So you know, just have to plant them. And then this is an etho, uh, ethos like uh, melon and pumpkin harvester. That you know, uh, one of the first builds that he put in his Let's Play world, and I thought that was like a little interesting. I know you can do it automatically now, but you, know, you don't really need pumpkins and melons that much in a single player world. I don't trade with villagers or anything like that. And then this is an impulse SV item filter. So you just put all of the things in here and it'll sort them. And then this light will turn off if anything that isn't compostable uh, get, ends up in there. So I know to go into the maintenance room and grab it. So here, if I put like. see the light will turn off in a second. So then, yeah, I know that there's something stuck back there. If we hit this button. So, over here, we're back at the little minecart system. So, here's, like, Ethos build pretty small. Uh, and then here is the item filter system. So we can access the chest, and then if we come over here... This hopper. And as you can see, this light turns back on. And yeah, now we're back towards the potion system over here. Open this up. And then, yeah, I've got a uh, harvest tools just nearby. here. So this build was inspired by iCraft MC. Uh, he used daylight sensors to harvest the sugarcane and the bamboo and everything like that, but I eventually used an etho hopper clock instead because um, day, uh, daylight sensors don't work at night. I thought that they would kind of like be the inverse, like reading the moonlight and such, but they, they do not, so they, they just don't fire at night, which is kind of annoying. And then yeah, just have some glowberries in the back because uh, thought that would look cool for a back wall. So if you hit this button, it will also automatically harvest everything. Got a minecart hopper to run behind and grab everything. So you'll see here in a second it'll get picked up. And each one of these uh, will automatically shut off whenever the chest down here of these is full. So when this sugar cane and this uh, bone meal is full, the sugar cane will turn off uh, whenever all three of these, or all four of these bamboo chests are filled up, the bamboo will uh, shut off as well as along with the glow berries. I kind of like having all that stuff like automatically shut off so that, you know, um, once this is done producing items, the farm doesn't cause too much lag. Yeah. Uh, yeah, need four chests for bamboo because it just grows so fast. And it's such a useful block for like creating chests and stuff like that. And then this will just automatically turn it off. And then if we come back here, you can see the minecart system that grabs it, unloads everything here. Uh, it's kind of like comparator system to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, each one of these individually shuts off. Down here, there's a bunch of end gates and such like that to make sure. It'll, oh, now it's automatic. Just here's the clock here. So whenever, whenever this one runs out, so this one will fill it in, and I just kind of time it with uh, a stack of each of the items that it filters. And then if we come back over here. switches here and we can automatic or you know we can just replace the uh, bamboo with something else if we wanted to yeah I think this chest has just some extra stuff for you know like let's say I need like a ton of bamboo or something like that I might just take the sugar cane out and put grow bamboo everywhere and then over 
here. Hit this button. And, well, we can at least walk around in this one. So yeah, I could plant bamboo here too, along with the glowberries. And this is connects to the mine shaft. The mine shaft as well. The mine shaft has a lot of uh, a lot of places that you can like connects to different parts of the build because it's kind of like I built around that. All right. And then if we come down here, this is my smithing place. So I do have a different place where I where I smith trims now, but uh, I built this area before they announced the trims and everything like that. And then I put the dragon egg up here because I didn't have a better place for it to put, and I thought it looked kind of cool here. But uh, I would definitely make a bigger room for the dragon egg in the future. So yeah, whenever I need to like uh, make a tool or something like that and put it with netherite, I just come here and do that. As you can see, I've got the the base is supposed to have uh, is supposed to be a three by three with nine beacons, but I don't have uh, that corner beacon, that corner beacon, or that corner beacon installed because I don't have an iron farm or anything like that. So I have to like manually go out and explore for it. So I just haven't gotten around to getting like the stacks and stacks of iron that it requires. And here we have a little wither area, you know, I, I just think this like looks kind of cool, even though, you know, it's a kind of like a call to the void thing, you know, where you don't want to, uh, definitely don't place a wither skull there because that would ruin everything. But, you know, uh, I just, I just think that it looks kind of interesting. So this is a water elevator. It does not work right now. It's triggered by skull sensors because the bubble columns, you can hear them in the smelter room, and I never really liked that. So then we can fall down here. So these uh, are automatic brewers by Impulse SV. They will just automatically brew night vision and uh, fire resistance, because I would know manually um, making those potions was kind of tedious because I mean, when you go out exploring, especially in the, in the nether, you essentially always want fire resistance on, and night vision is essentially just helpful at all times for exploring, so I still like to use torches to like bring a trail and everything like that, but you can just see so much better when you have night vision on, so. And this is an area, of, a map area of sort of the surroundings of the base. You know, there's like a mesa, big mountain system, I found a couple of ancient cities here. That's where I found my first mending book. Um, my end portal is right here, and that is also a woodland mansion. So that was that was a pretty crazy find to like go into explore, get get an elytra, and instead I found a woodland mansion. Well, I also found a woodland mansion, so I was able to get some totems before going and fighting the ender dragon. And then this is just a snapshot of what my base looks like um, at when I built this room. So yeah. Um, a lot of stone bricks from the maintenance rooms, as you can see, don't have too much built on the outside because I kind of like uh, having a little cave home instead. Uh, you can see the farm patches here and everything like that, though. This is the deep storage, so I this is where I store like horse armor and things like that, and then also you know shulker boxes of stone and things like that. Um, I have a lot of cobble deep sleep from building the item sorter, which you'll see later. I think this is also cobbled deep slate, but um, I st stored a lot of bamboo because uh, I knew that the update was going to be coming soon, but uh, the bamboo update was coming, but yeah, I couldn't craft it into the blocks just yet. But n and now it's all just kind of cobbled deep slate. Just got a lot of cobbled deep slate. And then here, you can see the skull sensors will trigger this elevator, and then it'll turn off after a couple of seconds. So you just sit back down. And then if we hit this button 
here. We get to the maintenance room of the potion brewer for, once again, link in the description to how to build that. Um, I mirrored the I mirrored the build and it works when you mirror it, so that's pretty sweet. And then down here we have the redstone for the elevator. So you just kind of like a simple just gets the pulse uh, senses it from the skulk here and then just will push these pistons. These pistons will just push all of the uh, soul blocks in place. And then I used to have it I used to have uh, used to have it triggered from like when you landed but eventually I realized that you know I was gonna have many ways to like get to this elevator from not just from like falling down that that little hole there so decided to make it uh, trigger like right before you go into the elevator instead and then there, if we hit this we come back out here on this build if we come over here so this is my nether portal room. Built this once I got a beacon in the world, so it, you know, insta mine all of this stone away. If we come down here, we have a little gate so that you can always walk through it. Uh, but this is here just so that the piglins that you know, like, will spawn on these portals won't walk away. And then this is a little area for the piglins to walk around in. These are all, these armors are all, uh, uh, like, at the max enchantment level, like these. Just, you know, it was like a, kind of a fun build to, like, you know, use, uh, all of the enchanted stuff that you find exp exploring around. And then these are my totem shrines. So whenever I pop a totem in my world, I, uh, represent it with a enchanted golden apple and then make a little room for it but for the first seven totems I didn't have the idea for it yet so I decided to use this as like a kind of a big area of the build so these first two totems when I when I found that woodland mansion when I was going to the end um, I popped two totems in there uh, like I I missed uh, an arrow on like one of the the vec uh, sorry the evoker and it spawned a bunch of vex and then I ran outside didn't think that the vex would be able to follow me they did and then after two totems uh, I looked into my inventory saw that I had my boat and I was in water and then I just I went away here uh, lost it to a warden um, I was kind of hiding from it and waiting for the darkness effect to go away before before trying to fly out but uh, did not know that the darkness is uh, just um, constantly on whenever you're near the warden. So yeah, a bad idea. And then, yeah, that little skulk shrieker there because that's what triggered it in the first place. Not that exact one. I mean, this this area was not an ancient city or anything. This totem, uh, after I uh, cleared my first ancient city, I decided to take a different route out. Just I, I don't know why. And uh, saw some redstone. In a, in a dripstone cave, decided to go for it. I looked around, didn't see any creepers, but then, well, a creeper blew me up. Well, popped my totem. So, yeah, should always be wary of uh, of mobs whenever you're mining for resources. And then these three totems happened while I was uh, in a nether fortress uh, farming the wither skeleton skulls. This was probably at the one of the lowest points of motivation in my world because I I hadn't gotten a beacon in any of my other hardcore worlds yet, but um, I don't know, uh, popping a lot of totems before then I don't know I, I was just kind of like I, I I don't know just didn't have a lot of motivation and was just kind of playing very loosely. Um, you know when you get hit by a wither skeleton, the uh, the um, the wither effect makes the health kind of hard to see so yeah I just I think I popped two in one day and then one the next day and yeah that was uh yeah just kind of loose play and over 
here. We have the maintenance room to the Piglin Gate. And then if we come over here, this will take us back up towards the um, towards the kelp smelter and the potion brewer. And over here, we're just back at the uh, the elevator. And it's soul soil here, so that you know you can move pretty fast. This is just moving around this giant room. And uh, you know this is a this is for piglin bartering, and this is uh, a wither five or a smite five sword for you know, going to hunt the wither skeleton. And then if we check the uh, the nether. I have not built anything in the nether. Uh, that was definitely a plan, but just haven't gotten around to it yet. For the nether, I'm definitely only going to have one uh, 4x4 or 2x2 beacon, not the full 3x3. Three three. And then, yeah, I can come over to the other side here. And we're back towards the, uh, the elevator. But if we walk here instead, this is my eighth totem pop. I was in another ancient city. I was just, um, you know, just kind of like mining skulk for experience, I believe. And I didn't notice where I was walking, and I fell into lava. I remember having a pretty big panic attack on this one. But uh, uh, you get a lot of fire resistance. You get maybe 40 seconds of uh, fire resistance, too, when you fall into lava. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Totems are just not really, uh, lava is just not really a problem when you have totems. If we come in here, this is kind of like my buried treasure room. Old treasures, like, you know, my first pickaxes and such like that. Um, most of the time I just, I break them, you know, without even thinking. But if I do remember to keep them, I just store them here instead. These are the enchanted ones here. Uh, these Heart of the Seas are... I was gonna replace these lanterns with conduits eventually, but um, yeah, I, I don't really go farming for Nautilus shells too often, and because I'm always down below in the base, it's hard to uh, 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 find every wandering trader or whatever because they only spawn on the surface. Got the banners here. You know, these are the first four woodland explorer maps, and these are the first ten buried treasure maps that I found. Um, I, I kind of discard them after this because don't really don't really need them. But the first ten were kind of cool to display. I think that's my first uh, iron armor or diamond armor that I used, and I think that's my first uh, iron armor. But like I said, I've I've played in so many hardcore worlds that you know, like you're trying to keep like the first relics and such like that are uh, you just forget after a while. And then if we come down here. You got a little uh, area in the river. I was gonna make a a path that goes to the other side there, cause you should be able to see the beacon, but I guess not. Sometimes those uh, they don't load properly. And then this was my ninth totem. I was in the, grabbing another woodland mansion, the fourth woodland explorer map, and thought I would never die or pop a totem in a woodland mansion again, but I did. I did, like, as I was, like, uh, breaking these wood blocks to get out, uh, one of the vex popped it. This little area here is my loom room, so whenever I have to, like, use the loom, I come here. A little bit of a, kind of a trophy room here. You know, uh, after I got my channeling trident, and then if we come up here, this is the landing area. So I will like take off and land to come into my base here. So as you can see, don't have too much uh, built outside. Here I'm gonna activate the. Uh... Ah, here they are. Sometimes you just have to like look down into the beacons to get them to load for some reason. So yeah, I've got other beacons on that there and in that corner there too, but I'm not sure why they're not loading. Uh, 
little bit of a bee area. I never built a bee farm or anything like that. And then, yeah, I haven't done a lot of terraforming outside because it just takes a lot of work. And if we come up here, this is sort of like my front entrance and like, you know, what you would see in the thumbnail. And yeah, that's where we, this is where we started. And then I've got my bed here in case it's nighttime and you need to sleep. Alright, so let's go back down. Uh, that treasure chest has uh, stores all of my uh, maps and such like that. So that um, if something happens to the, the maps that I have on display, I have a backup for them. If we go over here, this was going to be a spot where I went down for fishing. And this is uh, what's going to be the spot where I stored all my enchanted books. Yeah. Here we got another one of those little wither transitions. Uh, no idea where that was going to go. Just another part of the base. This room is the moon pool. So I was originally going to have this be a fishing spot. But then I found, I read that uh, if it's raining, you're, you can catch fish easier, so uh, the fishing spot's going to have to be outside for that. This is a little archery area. So I have not gotten the achievement for getting the bullseye, but if you were to get the bullseye, it would fire off some fireworks. But we can do that manually. We go into the maintenance room here. So we'll hit that button in a second. But if you follow this down, you can see the fireworks, uh, the dispensers for all the fireworks. And then here is the redstone for. So if it hits on the outside, nothing will happen. But if it hits pretty far on the inside circle, it'll at least light up. And then if you hit a bullseye, it will fire the fireworks as well. And it also gives the achievement for hitting a target block from 30 blocks. It's uh, This is exactly 30 blocks, I believe. And if we come up here, we are back at the kelp smelter. And then this little area will lead up to the, tre uh, the little treasure room over there. I guess we'll show it here real quick. Yeah, so if I ever need to like, grab the maps here, I can. Okay, these little blue areas just kind of uh, lapis blocks show that I'm moving into a different redstone area. Um, this this redstone build was by my own design, so don't have anybody to credit for that one. And then if we hit the button, this is what happens if you would get a bullseye. It light up. Fire some fireworks. Nothing too special or anything like that, but you know, it was more fun to just build it, you know, than anything. And if we come down here, we are in the archives. So every build that I, I do, I write a little bit about it. Um, so, you know, like these are all sort of like just the little transition rooms, like this like the hallways and such. Oops. And then these are like the actual builds themselves, like the storage room, mine shaft, potion brewer and such. These are the stories of all the totems that I've popped. Uh, I have popped a 12th one and uh, on the 12th one I just decided that like I, I, I kind of want to just start over and uh, I don't know. It would be so cool. Like, I really like this base and everything like that. And I'm, I'm going to essentially rebuild it in my new hardcore world. I kind of like iterate on hardcore builds like that. But um, I, I just think that I'm like, it would just be so much cooler to have this big base with all the beacons and stuff such like that without having popped any totems. Um, I just found myself like, I was kind of like, just exploring willy-nilly sometimes I just forget torches and I, I, I don't know I, I just think that it's more f like the the feeling of safety in the base was not uh, 
I wasn't really feeling the the same. I was feeling just as safe outside the base as I was inside the base, and that's because totems kind of make it so that you you know, like the situations that you're gonna die with a totem are so much fewer than the situations where you're gonna pop a totem, right? So it's just a little aesthetic there, and then this is a, a build inspired from Dark Souls 3. So if anybody's ever gotten to one of the one of the levels where there's kind of like a clay pit where you can uh, walk by the bookshelves without having like the spirits like bite, uh, take a bite out of you or anything like that. These are all the redstone. Talking about all the redstone aspects. Uh, just a little random tidbits about like if something fun happened while I was exploring in the world. And then just like some more just some books and uh, quills to write. So that's the archives. And then if we come over here, we get to the tenth totem. So I was just outside of my base, kind of like uh, farming mobs, and I didn't notice my health, and a skeleton shot me in the back. And um, yeah, I remember there was like a lava flow, and it was in a cave, and it was in a cave like right outside my base. So just kind of like made this area. But if we come in here, these are. This is my kind of reading room. So if I ever want to just like read something, you know, from the archives, I can come over here, place the book and quill on here. Yeah, so just a little area where I can read. And then if we go down in this little pool here, there's a little dark area here where you can also read too. I don't know, just thought it was kind of fun to build. And then this is where I store my old bows. And then I have a mending one here too. So whenever, since you can't have uh, mending on your infinity bows, so whenever they get to a low enough durability and uh, they become too expensive to repair, I will put them here. Uh, this would have some expansion. I think I was going to build a cactus farm over there because this kind of color aesthetic reminds me of Cactus Cooler for some reason. Well, not for some reason, but you know, this for anybody that knows, it's kind of a soda. I I don't know if you can buy it in your place of origin or anything like that, but uh, it, yeah, it's a really really good soda, and it's called Cactus Cooler. So I was gonna build a cactus farm with that color aesthetic there. Then here, this room I built when uh, the bamboo. Uh, when the update with the bamboo came out because I just wanted to build with it. I really like the green of the bamboo. And so this is just my smoker room. So whenever I have uh, like animal meat or something like that, like sometimes I'll hunt rabbits for the for the rabbit's foot for the potion brewer and such like that. So I'll just cook the cook the meat here instead of in the other smelter just just so that I, you know, I, I, kind of, I don't think that every room should have like a practical purpose, but you know, if they can have like a small little purpose, it, you know, it'd be kind of just cool to come down here to like cook some stuff just to go see the build. And I've got a little like skulk area out there, so it kind of looks like it's like a nighttime and such. I really liked how this one turned out. And then, yeah, this was more just kind of like expansion into the base, but we're gonna like. Just go down here. I think I was gonna make make an elevator or something like that. If we come over here, just gonna walk up over here real quick just to show that we're now back in the deep storage area. So instead of going to the buried treasure room, we can go down here, and this is the 11th totem room so when I was I found an amethyst geode when I was uh, making my item sorter and I just kind of like stood here like looking into the darkness and I guess a zombie must have spotted me I thought that I had blocked off the uh, the entrance properly but I did not and I, I went up to go uh, move one of my cats out of my uh, out of my closet and um, yeah I, then I heard a zombie was like smacking me and I got back to my computer and um, yeah 
I didn't pause the game because I guess I was like, you know, I, I still felt like I was in the base, so yeah, I don't know. You know, I think this this totem also was like kind of a, like a disappointing one because it was like, oh man, you know, like I I, I don't know, like it is it am I really like it? It just feels less like a hardcore world with totems, I think. And this was also the first uh, hardcore world that I played with totems, so. Yeah, I'm going to go back to not using totems because I just think that, like, mistakes like this are, like, I, I don't know. I might as well have just died or whatever. And this is a lodestone room here where got, like, interesting uh, places in the world. Like, I do have an area where I've, my first two deep slate emeralds that I found were next to each other. So I didn't grab those because I just, I just thought that was so cool that um, I just left them there. Uh, like just some interesting spots like this was like five four or five end cities like right next to each other um two ancient cities right next to each other a very very big mountain range i was very surprised how big that mountain range was yeah you know, it's just some like lodestones that are pointing to each other and if we come out here we're back at that little trophy room with the rainbow staircase and the uh the loom room Come down here. This is my smithing room. So I just got all the the smithing templates or the the colors for the, the trims. These are like the blocks to duplicate the trims. Here are the trims themselves. And yeah, these are the smithing tables to uh to do that. Uh, I never made any trims because I found all of the trims except for silence. Uh, I explored a couple of ancient cities and just was not able to find, find it. So, But I think that the silence looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, I kind of like how this build turned out. Kind of got a weird color scheme to it. And then if we come down here, this is the item sorter. So we'll fall down there in a second. If we come in here, you'll see the here's the little redstone area. Over here, we're back at the uh, elevator. And yeah, you're gonna hear the pistons just firing on and off because they just, they just fire because of all these skull sensors. But yeah, so we got the sensors there, and then this is the this is the maintenance. Uh, shaft down to the item sorter. Okay, where where is the exit again? Oh yeah, it's here I think. Yeah, so this is a uh, ouch. So you see the um this is my basement door. Um so not as a uh, not as uh, large or anything like that as Quipla's, but just looks kind of cool for just like being able to like walk in. And then these four areas would be places to go that I w would have for expansion as well. So if we fall down here, we are down in the item sorter. So when you land here, uh, if it triggers these skulk sensors down here first, it will not uh, trigger the elevator. But if you give it some time for these to deactivate, then there's a, another set of skulk sensors on um, this area here. So when these activate, and then these activate, that'll turn the elevator on. And it lasts for just enough time to take me up here, while also uh, keeping the beacon powers. So that was actually pretty lucky that, like, the... Uh, the length of this shaft or whatever was uh, at a good enough size. So, yeah. Over here we have the input of the item sorter. So you can just you can input shulker boxes or just individual items, and it'll filter that out. Um, it doesn't recognize uh, uh, full shulker boxes or anything like that, but just unloads everything and puts it into the item sorter. Yeah, we'll just unload all of this. 
this. The little Enderman gifts. So you just here go. Over here we have the shulker return. So these are all my these are the empty shulker boxes after they get after they get used. Um, these two light switches will turn off if either of these areas get full. This is like the for unstackable items and things like that. And then sometimes uh, items will like fly through without getting uh, sorted. So whenever this gets full, this half of the light will turn off. Over here we have some item sorters, uh, multi-item sorters by Rapscallion. Uh, you can essentially use these multi-item sorters to sort every item that you would want, but I use them just for like the kind of like treasure stuff and things like that. Pottery shirts and things. And I've got some uh, extra ones here that aren't even being used. So yeah, I've built uh, four of these modules. Yet, yeah, if you if you want like an efficient storage room for your uh, hardcore world, especially single player, I'd recommend just only building these um, these multi-item sorts, which I'll show in a second. But I also kind of like the block museum aspect of my item sorter, so you'll see that in a second. And then uh, this light will turn off if uh, any of these uh, shulker uh, boxes, uh, any of these chests with shulker boxes will fill up. So these are all just for like yeah, like things that will eventually uh, need to be uh, let I items that I get so much of that you know I will have to shulker. Uh, fill them with shulker boxes instead of just like the normal double chests that I have for the other items. I built this really large because um, I just factored in which items I think I would need to shulker sort and then I, I built this was the first thing I built in the item sorter but then eventually I realized that like for something like soul sand um, I, I needed like maybe like 10 soul sand at a time for like elevators and things like that so coming in here and grabbing the shulker box of it and everything like that was kind of annoying so I had to reroute the the item filter but uh, I did build all of this so I just kind of left it here so eventually you know I, I assumed that this would would have gotten filled up with uh, shulker sorted items I have some enter chests in here just to, for that and then these like back areas here are just for being able to like use the trident to fly fast takes a little bit of uh, skill to you know like not uh, hit something or anything like that uh, and sometimes you just like you only go like a foot so that's kind of a so it's not like super efficient or anything like that but it's kind of fun and then this is uh, some bats can spawn down here but uh, no mobs can spawn because the end rods it's about maybe 10 no maybe seven or eight blocks deep And then if we go, and then both of these sides are where I sort like the items that aren't going to be shulker loaded. So this is like my stone area. So you know, cobblestone, cobblestone stairs, cobblestone walls, and all that such. You know, just you know, it's probably way more efficient to use a uh, the wraps multi-item sorter for this kind of stuff, but. Um, I kind of like the block museum aspect of it, being able to like walk around. Uh, these little circular areas kind of like give give the give a size, or you know, like it makes the the room feel kind of big, but also kind of like separates each little area to sort of make it seem like you're like in the deep slate area or like the the granite area or whatever while while you're just grabbing things. So I I really liked how this kind of turned out. And then, yeah, so you can see here we can fly back to the entrance. And then, yeah, you can use these to, like, fly back and forth. And then this stuff, uh, you can see some of the items will flow through. So whenever they needed to switch, I had, like, a little area here that I could, like, uh, use for that. I'll show you in the maintenance room why there's like space between it and everything like that, but if we just walk down each of these little item things here, so this is the uh, blackstone, netherrack, prismarine, quartz, and then, you know, sometimes I'll just put other things like, you know, bricks and things like that. 
this item sorter took a long time to build just because you know getting the you know like you kind of have to just start from scratch and yeah I, I just played a ton of different games and stuff like that while like just maybe like just mining out some things every once in a while and like yeah but I'm really happy with the way this build turned out here we have like the ores and then here we have like copper and things like that I'd probably make copper its own like actual like lane now that I've seen all the uh, the new updates gonna be adding a bunch more copper blocks and if we come down here this is kind of like the gardening place got all like the different um, sands and things like that oh, one second I gotta let my cat out leaves, flowers, um, these are, you know, like the two white flowers that kind of need to be in an item filter. These were going to be the, uh, the sniffers, but I never got around to making a sniffer sanctuary yet. Here's the uh, coral. As you can see, I lose the beacon effect over here because I didn't have all the corner beacons placed yet. And then here's like the nether stuff. And then, yeah, we can use this to the uh, the amethyst geo that I popped my totem is in is down here, as you can see. Here, I'll show you. Yeah, I was like down here, like kind of exploring it, and I was like looking out like this way, and I guess a zombie must have like made it through. I blocked it off now, but um, I think yeah, I I thought that a zombie wouldn't be able to get through, but I think these two blocks were not uh, were not placed at that point. So yeah. That was an unfortunate totem to pop. Oh. Uh, I think there's a way back up here somehow. Um, how do I get back? Okay, here we go. I think up here. Ah, there we go. I said I just I really like just like walking through this and like you know like the these little circular transitions um, I got it I, um, for anybody that's played Halo 3 there is a there's an area there's like an area where you uh, walk through like the um, like a little mini representation of all the halos so I think that's probably where I got that idea from here we have mangrove uh, bamboo and uh, cherry wood and then over here we got the good old oak birch spruce jungle dark oak acacia and then crimson nether wart and uh, warp nether wart so whenever a new item or something comes off, you know, I can just uh, tear down this little area here and then just uh, expand it. So it's all kind of tileable. And then on the other side here, we have another set of items that get filtered. This is kind of like the random job blocks and things like that. Uh, all the lights. This is where I put the shroom lights if I got them, but um, yeah, they are pretty hilariously I don't want to say unobtainable but you know like if you don't like build uh, build farms and things like that like I don't have gold farms or creeper farms or anything like that I kind of like exploring for all my stuff uh, these are pretty hard to come by because you, you know you have to find a kind of have to find like a basalt delta that's like right next to a place where it has all the frogs or you have to take the frogs on a big journey and I just never got around to it random blocks like scaffolding and you know, dried kelp and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, ice and, you know, other random blocks and then uh, the skull blocks and things like that. Oop. Here we have 
redstone. You know, made it stone bricks because all my maintenance areas are made of stone bricks. So, you know, just some of the redstone items. I was going to put all of the buttons here because um, I don't have any buttons that's used for decoration because they all, like, will open maintenance doors or something like that. But that's not, like, a... That's not something that I was going to always do, you know, because I think buttons look pretty nice as, like, aesthetic touches. Uh, here are all the trap doors. And here are all the doors. Because, you know, they're... They, they are... These are activated by redstone, and these uh, make redstone pulses, so I just put them there. Just so that, you know, the redstone uh, lane would at least be a little wide, uh, a little long. Then here we have food. So, you know, uh, raw rabbit, rabbit, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, some of the other foods that you can use, like uh, eggs and such. I not don't need don't have too much food in Minecraft or anything like that. Um, and like I said, I essentially only eat baked potatoes. So then, if we come down here, this is the color lanes. So and anything that you know is can be one of the 16 colors I have here. So like the dyes, the colored glasses, terracotta, uh, concretes, wool, candles. So, so still some areas too here for expansion as well, which is nice. They don't add too many colored blocks like this uh, very often, but uh, when they do, it's pretty cool, like with the candles. So I called this one like the Badlands thing because it kind of like reminds me of the colors of the Badlands. Orange, red, brown, and then the light gray, gray, and uh, uh, black. <laughs> then down here I call this one the tropical skittles one because it's kind of like all of the I just like I don't know tropical colors so blue cyan oh wait no light blue cyan I don't know maybe that one's cyan I don't know which one of these colors are uh, blue green light green uh, pink uh, magenta and purple <laughs> here. This is sort of all of the items, like mob drops, um, kind of like utility items. Here I have all the ores for like smelting and stuff that needs to be smelted, stuff that has been smelted, uh, kind of like, you know, uh, more kind of mob drops and such like that. So yeah, just um, like essentially anything that kind of needed an item filter for like all of it. There's only, like, I think these two things are the only things that don't have item filters, or, uh, item frames. And yeah, so that's how all of the items and stuff like that get stored, and, you know, so I think it's a little unwieldy, and, uh, if I, you know, like, when I recreate this whole place and, uh, you know, decide to make an upgrade to the thing, I will probably run a minecart, uh, hopper. Uh, behind these, uh, like right here instead, uh, instead of this block, and so that it can like pick up items in this chest, so I can just like make a system that will, I can just input like a shulker box with like items that I want, um, kind of like Etho, it's kind of inspired by uh, what Etho's doing in his world right now, I think that that's like really pretty sweet, like, um, yeah. And then, yeah, let's take a let's take a look at the maintenance side of this whole thing. So this is the uh, Shulker Fox filter by Metamilo, Metamilo, I believe. Um, Shulker Box unloader by Douglas Gordo. And so yeah, um, the Shulker boxes will go down here, and the items will go this way. And if we come down he over here, these are this is the. Uh, shulker or skulks I keep getting skulker no, shulker and skulker skulks mixed up um, so yeah this these are the outside ones and then these are the inside ones so you can see that and that's going to trigger that for a couple of seconds and then this is the redstone for that down here too uh, this was also my own design up 
here we have a switch to turn the item filter off in case you know something gets full this goes up to the this is the maintenance elevator that I showed you earlier and yeah let's let's walk down the lane here so if we follow this so you can see here the items will flow here I originally had them flowing all the way over here to the uh, to the shulker boxes, but now that's the end instead of the start. Uh, this is a little area here that just kind of like represents that that's this is how it originally went. And then yeah, the uh, empty shulker boxes will just go down here. And yeah, so and then yeah, item sorters by impulse us fee. So yeah, I'm not gonna walk down every single one of these lanes or whatever. But I've got some arrows here to sort of indicate like uh, which direction the items are flowing in, and as you can see, the the filters will not ever bleed over. But uh, this is sort of the middle, and so the reason that this these little areas are here is because that is the minimum amount of space that I could uh, that I had for like to uh, put them back to back. So we, yeah, we can follow follow the redstone or yeah the items will just like flow through this area and you know they'll get picked up by the proper hopper and they'll go all the way onto the other side flow through all of this and then once they reach this side uh, they will go downwards which will go here and if, but if we follow this path we're like back at the start but I, I like to have a I like to be able to like follow the item stream so if we go down here this is the elevator upwards and if we hit that little button we'll fall down here and then this is just a uh, this just collects the items here and then shoots them out again so that it uh, it resets their their five minute timer because uh, it takes more than five minute or may it might not be exact might be less than five minutes but uh, this is kind of like a just in case so you know so that the items don't despawn before they get filtered here we are back at the start again as well this is kind of the bottom and then we can go back up as you can see, the items just keep continue along again, down another, down the path again, and then all the way back, and then they transition over to the other side, and they follow this path. Pretty, pretty long. Um, you know, mining all of this out, you know, got me a lot of deep slate and everything like that. But um, once I once I figured out like the pattern and like you know what uh, each one of these like places uh, like modules would look like you know it was kind of just stacking the modules so it became a lot more fun once I had like figured out the uh, the design of everything but and then yeah and then they once they're finished with all sorting all of the items they'll come up here and make it over to the shoulder box uh, loaders and these were designed by uh, Il Mango, and then so well first they're item filters that are you know uh, by impulse, and then they will once they're filtered they will come into these shulker loaders here. I'm not sure if they're completely lossless or not. Uh, I don't. I think they're. I think they're lossless. Like um, some designs that I was looking at online, the there'd be a chance of uh, the shulker box like not uh, flying into the. Um, not flying into the hopper but um you know for like bulk storage like this if you lose a uh, shulker box of stuff every once in a while it's not that big of a deal to me and then yeah this is uh this is the shulker boxes so whenever that runs out this will um this will trigger and shut off the system so i can't uh filter any filter any items until i have replaced these shulker boxes uh, this was, you know, uh, 
little artifact of, you know, uh, when it would come through. Come through here. So I, I kept a little bit of uh, artifacts from before I had to reroute everything. Like it, act, it would actually flow, like in the, like the whole system flowed in the opposite direction. But it didn't take that long to reverse everything. And then um, all of these trapdoors, even if they get activated, um, they won't uh, interfere with the item because the items are going to be pushed in the other direction. And then yeah, once they go through all of the shulker boxes. Then they fall down here into the multi-item sorters by Rapscallion. Once again, uh, yeah, these are pretty crazy, uh, very crazy build. You know, just kind of don't know exactly what's going on with these because um, they're pretty complex. But yeah, they they work so well. You know, you can just you have your uh, filters and then. You can just filter what you want to sort. It only requires two of them, while the impulse ones require 40, uh, 42, I believe. And yeah, awesome, awesome, uh, pretty awesome build and like very technical. I just like yeah, I'm I'm super like in awe of like how these things work. But um, yeah, if it wasn't for the fact that I kind of like the block museum aspect of the item filters, um, I would have. Uh, I would store all of my items using these. And then, yeah, so they'll. The items will flow through here, over these composters, into the other one, and then once they have done that, they come into this overflow chest system. Uh, and yeah, this is. So you can access all. This is the chest that we saw from the outside over there. And then down here is all of the lights and everything like that. So just making sure that all yeah all the redstone that's hooked up to these lights and everything like that. And this is the sh empty shulker boxes. And if we go up here. This is the sort of shut off switch. So once this gets activated, this will fly all the way over here back. And uh, so if you know one of the, uh, if anything ever gets full, it will uh, sh shut the item sorter off or make it so I can't open the chest to put items in before having to go check all that stuff. And yeah, here are the multi item sorter lights and everything like that. So yeah, that is uh, that is my item sorter. I'm really happy with how this turned out, and once I get, and it has like some upgrade potential, you know, to make it so that I can put a. Well, I think it has upgrade potential. I haven't really tested it out yet or anything like that. But yeah, there's only one other part of the base that I'm going to show here, uh, finished or anything like that. But I thought it would be kind of cool to have. An area like at, the far, at the lowest end of the base that was just a large section. I was going to have it. Uh, these are all bone blocks and uh, and rods, but I didn't really like the way this kind of looked. So I it was instead going to plan on uh, putting black concrete all over it, everything, so that and then maybe uh, carpets down here, so that yeah, it's just a big dark void at the bottom of the base. Uh, this is 20 blocks. Um, 20 blocks high, uh, 100 by 100 because it's the uh, full range of this, uh, these four beacons here. So that no matter where you are, you have the effect of all four beacons. But um, yeah, it took quite a while to uh, carve all this out. I, as you can see, there's a lot of moss blocks around. So I just kind of like would make the floor moss, and then I would harvest the moss and. Uh, then I'd compost the moss so that you know you can just it's kind of like a self uh, perpetuating cycle or whatever so you but then you gain bone meal by doing that but would have to do this whole section here eight more times to do uh, to get all of the beacons around the area 
And yeah, that was going to take quite a long time. And I realized that, you know, to do that, I would have to build the item sorter first. So this is, yeah, the complete bottom of the base. And uh, the plan was to eventually put uh, black concrete everywhere here. Because I think that would look pretty cool to have like a big, big void area at the bottom of the base. Okay. So yeah, that is my hardcore base. And like I said, I'm going to be starting over because um, I would really like to have all of this done without having to pop the totem. It's going to take a lot, uh, lot shorter of time to, you know, to build all of this than it is to, uh, than it was to like design it all from scratch. But you know, I got a little a bunch of areas for expansion, and there's like a lot of stuff outside, you know, like, um, like I don't have any like. Uh, sheep pens or anything like that. Uh, I haven't dealt with any of the sort of farm animals or anything like that, but I'd like to like have like a little sheep area where all of the colors of sheep are. And then, you know, if they wander into a certain area, I'll shear them or whatever. So just randomly over time, I'll collect some uh, wool. Same thing with the sniffers and such like that. But just, uh, yeah, didn't get around to it. And um, yeah, so the 12th totem. So I was coming back from a, an ancient city on that big mountain range and it was raining outside. And so when it's raining in the Trident, you can just like fly up like 400 blocks and then, you know, just fly in the air. And then uh, since this is basically right around spawn, uh, I can just use a compass to find my way back. And so as I, as I came back and I flew down here, I guess I had like a lot of velocity or, you know, there was some, some kind of glitch, but I kind of like flew it like this and, you know, instead of using the landing area like I normally do and I flew in here and then it just, it popped the totem. So I'm assuming that, you know, uh, there must've been like some kind of like, uh, uh, desync issue or something like that with the way the, uh, the game was handling it because it, it like assumed that I like hit the floor or something like that without at like full speed or something like that and pop the totem and at that point I don't know you know it's it's just like I built this little landing area you know there's water here where you can just land but instead I decided to just you know I wouldn't land here instead I would like you know just like kind of like glide in like this and you know I, I don't know like if I build all these different parts of the base to you know, serve their kind of, like, purpose and things like that. Like, totems, like, I don't know, they kind of, like, make me circumvent all of the safety features and things like that, like the fire resistance potions that I always build. Sometimes I'll just go to ancient cities and I won't use the fire resistance potions because, I don't know, you know, now that I know that totems add, you know, 40 seconds of uh, fire resistance, I just don't need them. But, you know, I like using all those kind of, like, resources and stuff like that to stay safe, so I think, uh, you know, getting back to this point without um, totems would be really awesome. So, yeah, I'm just gonna like, the only thing that I think that I will make sure is that this, uh, is that this level, I, I'll probably, you know, use F3 to find whatever, uh, what level this is at and just make sure that, um, yeah, this is on the same level so that, you know, everything from the elevator and stuff like that is all be able to, I can reproduce it all. But I don't think I will find, like, a specific, like, you know, river area or anything like that. So I don't know what the, what the outside or anything like that is going to look like. But, um, yeah, I'm going to build a, yeah, a 3x3 three three beacon area base and just kind of, like, build around that for the whole thing. I don't really like having like multiple places and like around the world with like different kinds of farms and stuff like that. I kind of like having everything in like one, one little base area. So yeah, that is the, that's going to be the plan for the future. And I'm also going to be streaming, uh, that whole thing. So, you know, uh, sometimes a lot of people, you know, the, there's accusations of cheating and such in the hardcore world. And obviously, you know, I'm, I, I'm telling you here that I popped these 12 totems, but you know, you could just, you know, I could have just as easily have died in one of these situations and just like, you know, uh, restarted the base or anything like that. Um, I didn't do that, but you know, there's nothing that, uh, I don't really have any way to like prove that or not. But, um, f 
for my next one I'm gonna be streaming it all so that there will be like a uh, there will be kind of like a evidence evidence or whatever for it in case uh, you know uh, this uh, people like the base or anything like that and it takes off so yeah <laughs> I heard a wandering trader up here let's go see you have nautilus shells even though it doesn't really matter I wonder Wandering Trader always, like, sometimes he finds himself in here, yep. Oh, you, know, you turn yourself invisible. Well, I do have a bed to sleep in for that. But yeah, I think it would be, and, you know, not a lot of terraforming. Or like, I think I was going to make this, like, little spot a fishing hole, but could also just use the river. But, um, yeah, I imagine that, you know, when I re I'm just going to, like, hit a random seed and... Uh, I don't think I will stay by spawn like like I did with this one. I'm just gonna try and find a, a nice spot because you can just use um, lodestones as a compass to kind of find your way back. And yeah, uh, kind of like fiddling around here with. Where are you, wandering trader? Maybe all the way down here. Oh, you actually did have some Nautilus shells. Ah. Well, eh. You know, like I said, I'm not going to be playing on this world anymore, so don't uh, don't need them. But yeah, it would have been cool too. I really like the wandering traders. A lot of people are like, "Ah, hey, wandering trader, get out of my area" and stuff like that. But I think it's cool when they uh, they come visit you. It'd be really nice if you could like build a spot like with like a village bell or something like that, so that the wandering trader always spawns there. But yeah. So yeah, that's my. Uh, this is the hardcore base, and yeah, I'm not going to be playing on it anymore, but I'm going to be starting a new one and essentially rebuilding this whole thing from uh, from scratch. And then, you know, once I get to the point where I've rebuilt all this, I'll be able to start building some new stuff like that cactus farm, that cactus cooler farm, and yeah, that's going to be sweet. Well, if you made it all the way to this point in the video, that's pretty crazy because, I don't know, this has got to be like at least an hour long. So, well, hope you enjoyed it, and... Um, uh, check out the stream and uh, yeah thank you so much and uh, goodbye